In the early stages of a new bull market, this is how breakouts begin. They continue to test the upside on great news and then give back some, if not all, of those gains. But the main thing we need to consider is that the market continues to put in higher and higher lows on the back of a macro outlook. Today's video, let's look at similar patterns that are playing out right now on Bitcoin, similar to what happened in the bull market of 2016 that led into the almighty parabolic move of 2017. So don't go anywhere, hit that like and subscribe. Thanks once again for joining us here on your home of macro cycle analysis. We study the past to forecast the future and I had to say a huge thank you to you guys. I often ask for you to subscribe and you went ahead and did that yesterday. Nice big moves of 129 new subscriptions and a huge shout out to the one in four people who are not subscribed. If we had 20,000 views, 5,000 of you wouldn't be subscribed. How quickly would we make it to 300,000 on the channel if you hit that button? So thanks very much again and to your comments as well after you hit that like button. Awesome stuff to see from you guys down below. And for the new guys who have little analysis and experience, I'm glad this content is helping you out. All right, let's dive straight in to the short term and the long term as we wrap up the week and look at the macro cycles that continue to play out as we hit key resistance levels. Bitcoin has hit almost to the dollar the 50% level for that key monthly range. I saw a few of you comment about that as well. You're keeping an eye on those monthly levels or those 50% levels, which are macro key resistance and support levels as well. So in the last 48 hours, Bitcoin on the back of the XRP news and the spot Bitcoin ETF and all of the hype, the news at the peaks, we got a little intermediate top here at 31,818 if we're looking at the Bitstamp chart. Now over the last 24 hours, so we had 48, now 24, the market gave all of those gains back. So it was a huge reversal, but so far it's a higher low. Nonetheless, this is not what you want to see at a early, early stage of the breakout. We do see it and I'll show you in a minute just where we see it as well. But ideally we want to keep seeing higher and higher lows put in, at least this is the short term, but for the longer term, you know where we're looking. We're looking at these macro higher lows continue to form as well. So, so far, it's only been a 24 hour move, 3.6% up, 3.6% down. We're back to where we started after the news, which means we continue to grind away between 31 and $29,000. So nothing has changed since the 21st of June. So nearly four weeks ago, all that's changed is the emotions of the market, the ups and the downs, the tests to the upside, the false signals on the short term. Remember here, we're looking at the macro and of course, there's going to be more false signals on the shorter term charts because there's more volatility in that uh, in the short term. So, so far, nothing really has come of the test and we've come back down. So let's look at the downside, the worst case scenarios. And the price still remains at a roughly $28,000 for the 50% level. And that's at the top of that first really solid breakout bar on the 20th of June. It also comes in at the tops back at the end of May. So it could be a potentially good area there for support, but I'm not saying that the market has to get back down there. But if it was to get back down to that area, it would still be a good solid base for a bull market to continue. What the bulls don't want to see is a breakdown of 28. 28 is, is a key level at the moment now. So uh, because we've got that new top, basically it's moved this price to 28,287. All we're doing is joining the bottom to the top, splitting it in half. And I'll show you how important these 50% levels are as well if you are new to understanding what 50% levels are. So anything in this grind is still fine for the macro. And the macro takes time. We've gone through this heaps and heaps of times. Uh, a few weeks ago, we looked at the move to the upside. So I posted this on Twitter on the 28th, so two and a half weeks ago. And the idea here is that the market needed more time to the upside. Everyone was hoping for a pullback two weeks ago, which we didn't get. And it really only just has been grinding sideways. The idea behind this is we're seeing big moves to the upside, even during the bear market, the time for the move to for the, the time for the upside was at minimum three weeks three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, this is in the bull market here, but then all the way to a maximum of nine to 12 weeks. So currently we sit at four weeks. So we're four weeks up now that we've got that new 
top in and the weekly is going to close in about two days time. So we're at four weeks, we're at the bottom end of the move to the upside for the weekly time. So let's see where the price ends up uh, as we approach the end of this week and next week because that puts us at roughly the same time frames that we've seen throughout the bear market and the beginning of the bull market. So until macro levels get taken out, that's when we would flip to a bear. And this would then continue to be maybe a, uh, a bear market rally. But honestly, I can't see that happening. This is the key level right here. 19 and a half thousand, that is my major line in the sand. If we broke 19 and a half, then you could be looking for uh, a lot further downside. Until 32 breaks, so I want to see $32,000 break, then I would probably throw this low into the mix of saying that we will not revisit under 25,000. But until we break that 32, all of this is still in question. Once we get that break above, then you can basically say, look, that's a very significant low. And if that was to come back and break down from that low, that's going to be very, very weak. So hopefully that makes sense. We're still in a macro uptrend. Nothing has changed. It's just a matter of time. Time is always far more important than price. So we still have a few more weeks left. Let's see how we go with that. Now, in terms of the macro, just to remind ourselves again, because a lot of us are getting caught up on day-to-day -day action. Most of us aren't, but there are a few, which is fair enough, especially if you're new to the market. That can be quite scary. You see all of this great news, and then all of a sudden it's reversed. So logically, you think, well, this is it. It's over. We had all the best news that we could have ever imagined, and now we just lost all those gains. But remember, we've been going up for months now since the FTX collapse and the banking crisis collapse and the SEC lawsuit. So it's higher than higher lows. That's the way this thing works. This is what we were looking at uh, a couple of weeks ago again, is just the extreme macro here. So this is like the biggest of the bigs. We've got the quarterly chart and we've got two green quarters. That's happened. We're now into the third quarter. So naturally we could expect a red third quarter because we're only at the start of a new bull market here. In bull markets, uh, we've often seen greens and reds at the beginning of them, and then towards the end, it's just basically green all the way. Now, in a bear market, we've never seen two green quarters in a row. Never say never, maybe it could happen in the future, maybe this is happening right now, but I completely doubt it because of what we're seeing in the traditional markets as well, with the stock markets, with real estate, that is all up in uptrends, it's in a macro bull market. So I doubt Bitcoin is going to collapse while the rest of the markets are going up. We've talked about that a lot as well. So this is just a reminder that we've got a huge green backdrop of two green quarters, which has never happened in a Bitcoin bear market. And we've covered this for the stock markets well as well, which hit three green quarters, which has never happened in their bear markets either. Another macro piece that we had been following was a potential breakout in price to the upside. Now, maybe I've got a little bit carried away thinking that we're going to get this within the next week or two, and this could take another few more months like we've seen in the past. Uh, we're looking for a breakout of the price range, so basically a breakout of the trading range here. All this is looking at is basically uh, one or two months of price trading range, and often the market can get contained within this price range or trading range, and then eventually break out. And when it breaks out, it does it on pretty significant volume, pretty significant price moves. You can see here we had the bear market drop. So there was that one month of trading range between approximately 6,000 at the bottom and about 11 to 12,000 at the top end. And the market was contained within this one price range that happened, I think that was February of 2018. And it stayed within that price range for eight months. And what happens there is that the market gets tired, boring, people leave, they get bored because the price isn't doing anything. And that's kind of what's happened at this stage since the May of 2022 when we had that collapse. Oh, sorry, that was uh, June of that collapse there. So just looking at this, you had the eight months, then finally the breakdown. All right, we had accumulation, break up. And then you can see this one bar, which was June 2019. The price was essentially, sure, it did come out for a little bit, got back in, pandemic, came back in, but it stayed within that price range predominantly for about 17 months. And then when you broke out, huge move to the upside. 
you get the idea here. We had the same sort of price range here for two months, stayed in there for 13, when it broke out, big volume, huge move to the downside. Haven't revisited that area for over 13 months now. Same deal at the bottom, nine months stayed within the price range of January 2015. Finally, it breaks out and that is actually a very, very big bar there. A huge move to the upside, pull back, consolidate and then kept going from that point. So that's what we're looking at moving forward and maybe we still have a little more time to play out for this move here. And uh, that's also represented on the weekly move here. So we're just holding out, waiting to see what happens from that point. The other piece was our second phase of the bull market. So that's where we currently sit. These phases, they're not always a super clear trend. Move to the downside, move to the upside. So there's your up, down, and then sideways. But nonetheless, once we get to the fourth stage, that's when things become a lot clearer and the moves become quicker, faster, and uh, more sustained to the upside. That's the time where you start chasing your tail if you haven't built a position yet at these points. So we're basically getting a little more time to build the positions. And don't be fooled, the market does not have to go to this top or the bottom. It's just a rough guide looking at monthly tops and then uh, price range here of about uh, where these tops tops were previously before the breakout. So it doesn't have to go to those areas. It's just a bit of a guide moving forward. And what we've seen in the third sections, this case, we broke out. But in this case, we basically stayed within the same price ranges of the first and the second phase. So the fourth, fifth, and sixth are going to be the times where things get really fast and uh, yeah, basically chasing the tail at that point. So pay attention to the market now, even if it gets a little more dead, like essentially it has done for the last three weeks. But what we're attempting to do is break past the 50% level. So this is what we're talking about, uh, I said in the intro, we're looking at something very, very similar to 2016. As we start off on our run to the upside, here is a monthly swing top. So I can show you that here on the month. That's a key significant level at $48,000. There's the bottom. That's your 50% right through the middle at 31,851. And this market yesterday or the day before almost got to the exact dollar, 31,851 and the price was 31,827. And so we've come up once, twice, three times. We're getting closer and closer four times. These are key, very, very significant resistance levels that the market is going to take some time to get past. And it's not going to be an easy straight up ride to break past it. But once we break past it, you're probably not going to see a price underneath that level again. These 50% levels are extremely strong. So the other thing to add to that is, and this might get a little bit more complex for the, the guys who've been around a little bit longer, but if you can really just understand that looking at this price range, the move up from the banking crisis to the first peak here, projected from the bottom, so it's basically just a one, two, three pattern here, we're still sitting at the 50% level as well. So there's multiple price uh, clusters coming together to form resistance at this thirty and a half thousand to thirty two thousand dollar level. So it's got a lot of work to get uh, get through that level. But once it does, probably going to be sitting above that level. And this is sort of potentially the last chances underneath that sort of thirty to thirty two thousand dollar level. But it can take several more weeks. Now the move that this is looking like. So you can see how this has played out over. Uh, 2022 and 2023 using that monthly swing top to the bottom 50 percent going to take some time hopefully break out from that point same deal back here in 2015 through to 2016 that's your monthly swing top there's your bottom there's your 50 percent level in this case it tested it a little more kept breaking under but then eventually came and sat on top of the 50 percent level broke out again tested that monthly swing top came back again, of course, because nothing happens in a straight line. And that this is a weekly chart. So this happened over 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So about five months after it touched it for the first time, it took about five months until it could uh, get close to clearing that level again. In this case, for the first touch, which is kind of where we sit, it took about 29 weeks, so nearly seven months there, to clear that, that next level. So we're only at this 50% level for the last four weeks. I'm not saying it has to take seven months, but it's just to put things into perspective that these things can take time at the beginning 
of the move because you still have a lot of people believing that the market has to collapse. And once they get squeezed because you're seeing these higher lows, they get squeezed and finally have to bite the bullet and flip in their decisions. And the same thing happens again. There's less and less of those bears to get squeezed. And then finally it flips again. And then as you run up into the peaks, you have far, far, far less bears, but you've got people taking profits on the way up. That's where you get these uh, corrections to the downside as well. So now it starts to become profit taking rather than bears getting squeezed because most people have flipped by this stage probably too late. But uh, nonetheless, those guys who bought up here at the lows, like we've been doing, you've been doing, I hope, then you start to take profits on the way up and you don't have to wait for the exact top. You've got huge gains to be had from the bottom to that area right there. So same deal. That looks like what's happening at the moment. You can see that top there. There's your monthly bottom 50% level through the middle. Markets come up, testing it. Fast forward to where we are today. There's your monthly top bottom markets come up to test 50 percent rinse and repeat really it's sort of the same thing over and over again so once you see it it's pretty hard to unsee that and you can use that analysis going forward into any other market and that's the beauty about what we do at tia premium so that's your link at the top of the video description if you want to learn more about trading and investing full-time as well so that's what we've covered here. That looks like what's happening similar to 2016, but it's the same sort of pattern that you can see on any market, stock markets, commodities, anything with a chart, similar sort of thing happens as well. Let's check this out. One second, bottom to the top, to the all time high. There's your test of 50%, finally breaks out. Clean that up. You can see just how nice and clean that is. This is on the S&P. Similar sort of thing happened for the NASDAQ as well. All time high cycle low there's the bear market low in october many still think the stock market is going to collapse it has broken 50 percent. it's broken resistance levels this is up up and away testing the next rejection levels which are previous tops uh the s p has closed at 5.6 percent away from a new all-time high so just 5.6 percent from a new all-time high i've looked before i have never seen this thing in its history close so close to a the previous all-time high, and then collapse and make a new significant low. Potentially, we could go back into the 60s or the 70s when we had some of those uh, big moves, ups and downs, but each of those times, it kept making a new high, came back and made a new low, big new high, big new low, and then, of course, since the 70s, this thing has been on a mission to the moon, just been straight up. So end of the week, another strong close, but these moves eventually have to come to an end, especially when we're looking at time, Bottom to this peak here in January, 16 weeks, 16 weeks. Remember that? Then we go to the March collapse. That's the banking crisis low. It's a very, very, very significant low. We're now 17 weeks. So we're repeating in time. There's only so much energy the market can push to an upside before it needs to pause, at least pause, go sideways maybe, or we do get a slight correction. So these timings are coming up, but many have missed out on huge moves. So I suspect, I might not always be right, but I suspect many are hoping for a, a push down, possibly breaking these levels. But as I've demonstrated, you're probably not going to see a break past 4,200 points here. I'm going to call it around that 4,000 or 3,800, which is significant lows. So it might continue to range trade at these higher levels, and then they miss out because they're hoping for lower prices rather than reading the chart and just focusing on the data that has been given here. So pay attention to where those swing bottoms are coming in. Good high close for the S&P, now a good high close for the NASDAQ as well. Again, above previous resistance levels, although the move is starting to slow, same deal, 16 weeks up. And we have now 17 weeks to the upside. So we are getting to the potential end of a time move here. It doesn't mean it has to end today or next week or whatever, but just note that these moves do need to come to a rest at some point. It doesn't mean they have to correct in a massive or significant fashion. It could be a grind sideways. Note that these markets have done this in the past and caught many out. This significant, there are some significant moves, but it also, it, it's also far, far less than what many were hoping for after a mega bull run. That is a very tiny move to the downside when you compare what had happened already. Many were hoping for much, much bigger drops. 
So just to note that as well in case we do only grind sideways and uh, drop to some other levels here. Now the last one is the US dollar. This has collapsed past key support levels. This is all going to be part of the macro picture. So like I just showed, uh, those um, uh, stock markets have closed up relatively well. We're 6% from highs. The US dollar also feeding into that macro picture. It's broken past 100. It's now uh, touched 99 for the first time since April of 2022. And it looks like over the course of several weeks and months, we're going to see further downside if not for the next several years as well, as these markets continue up, the stock markets, the real estate market, uh, crypto, and this US dollar is going to continue to slide down to previous support levels and then just start to grind away at some of these lows. All right, so that's what I've got for you today, guys. Go and hit that subscribe button, like up the content. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here at your home of macro cycle analysis next week for more updates on the markets. Until then, Peace out.